Ptolemaeus, forced to take poison in 309 BCE. The Second War of the Successors had left Antigonus as the most powerful player in the contest for Alexander's throne. And for the other would-be successors, the calculus was now that if they desired to acquire independent power, they would be forced to gang up on Antigonus. By the time that the Third War of the Successors broke out, Antigonus realized that he was the man to beat and that it was vital that he entrust as many of the major commands as possible to men that he could trust implicitly, such as his son, Demetrius. Having only one son, Antigonus turned to his nephews for help, and one of them stood out from the rest. Ptolemaeus, also sometimes referred to as Ptolemy in the sources, was Antigonus's nephew. We do not know the details of his life, his date of birth, or any interesting personal anecdotes that might shed light on his personality. Ptolemaeus first appears in the historical record as one of Antigonus's generals during the Third War of the Successors, which started in 315 BCE. When the Third War started, Antigonus was surrounded by rivals on all sides of his realm, but the resources that he commanded were greater than what all of his rivals put together were able to field. His first priority was to contain Cassander, the ruler of Macedon, who was attempting to spread his influence in the Asia Minor. When the satrapy of Cappadocia declared for Cassander, Antigonus ordered Ptolemaeus there to squelch this defection. In addition, Ptolemy's fleet was now dominant in the eastern Mediterranean, and in 315 it was under the command of Seleucus. Ptolemaeus had to worry about raids from this fleet while also dealing with the satrap of Sander. Toward the end of 315, Antigonus ordered Ptolemaeus to move into Caria, since he was concerned that Ptolemy would seize the area as a bridgehead from which to enter Europe. Ptolemaeus made his winter camp just beyond the frontier of Caria. Caria was defended by the satrap of Sander, who was now able to hold his own thanks to the mercenaries that Ptolemy had lent him in order to defend against the Antigonids. The fighting in 314 was desultory and indecisive, as neither side could gain the upper hand. At the end of 314, Asander visited Athens to raise troops, while Cassander dispatched his pet general Prepolaeus with reinforcements to help Asander break the deadlock. In the summer of 313, Antigonus himself arrived in Asia Minor and took over the direction of affairs there from Ptolemaeus, who was now sent to Greece with a large army. Previously, Antigonus had sent a sizable force under another nephew named Telesphorus, and he had been successful until he had failed to capture some cities on Euboea, and then he had moved into the Peloponnese and revolted from Antigonus for reasons unknown. Ptolemaeus was able to secure most of Euboea, except for a small part that was saved by one of Cassander's brothers. Ptolemaeus landed in Attica and got Demetrius of Phalaron to return to the Antigonid fold. After leaving Attica, Ptolemaeus marched through Boeotia and the Peloponnese proclaiming freedom for the Greeks and helping the local Poles to expel the Macedonian garrisons that were loyal to Cassander. It is not clear precisely when Telesphorus had revolted, the means by which Ptolemaeus brought him back into the Antigonid fold, or how long this took. However, Ptolemaeus spent the final couple of years of the Third War of the Successors bringing his brother or cousin to heel rather than putting additional pressure on Cassander from the south while Antigonus was attempting to pressure him from across the Hellespont. Ptolemaeus' achievements in Greece were impressive, but he did not manage to eliminate the fiefdoms of either Polyperchon or Cratocyphilus, so we should not stand shocked that Antigonus did not lavish extraordinary honors on him for his role during the Third War of the Successors. In 311, Antigonus made peace with Ptolemy and Cassander, the peace was flawed, did not hold for long, and was something of a sham since Antigonus and Seleucus remained at war in Babylonia. By 310, it was clear that Ptolemy and Cassander were about to break the peace and renew the war with Antigonus. For reasons that are unknown, Ptolemaeus defected from Antigonus and sided with Cassander, bringing with him a significant portion of Greece. Hoping to become the general of the Peloponnese in Polyperchon's place, Ptolemaeus's hopes were dashed when Cassander and Polyperchon were able to make up their differences. With Polyperchon also in Cassander's fold, Ptolemaeus was now without a nearby neighbor to fight. Lacking opportunities, Ptolemaeus most likely regretted his decision to leave his uncle's army. It was around this time that Ptolemy of Egypt was planning to land an army in Greece 
and he was shopping around for allies. In Ptolemaeus, he found a willing ally and partner. Hoping to serve as Ptolemy's man in Greece, Ptolemaeus probably envisioned unifying all of Greece under his own power and then going independent. Ptolemy arrived at the island of Kos, and he summoned Ptolemaeus to join him in 309 to discuss their strategy for conquering Greece. Ptolemaeus visited Kos, expecting to have a productive meeting, only to be immediately arrested upon his arrival. Ptolemy accused him, quite probably without any evidence, of having tried to subvert Ptolemy's own men. More likely, Ptolemaeus' eager defection so quickly on the heels of another defection made him appear to be untrustworthy. When Ptolemaeus' instability was combined with his skill as a general and the fact that as an Antigonid, he could realign with his family and potentially empower Ptolemy's chief rival, Ptolemy's decision to arrest and execute Ptolemaeus starts to make a great deal of sense. Ptolemy sent poison to Ptolemaeus' cell and ordered him to consume it. Ptolemaeus died, and without him, the little fiefdom that he had carved out for himself collapsed, thus leaving a power vacuum that only Ptolemy was in a position to fill. In the short run, Ptolemaeus' demise was breaking the power of Greece, and this most affected Cratocephalus, the beautiful widow governing Corinth and Sicyon on Cassander's behalf, who felt compelled to surrender to the vastly superior force of Ptolemy as soon as he landed, due to the lack of local aid that was now available without the best general in Greece and the most powerful of the local rulers.